Welcome to Reading the Bible with Pastor. Today we're on chapter 1 and verse 9. We are we just read about how John was introduced, John the Baptist, and he's the final prophet preparing the way of the Lord. And he tells us that there is someone coming, Jesus, who is mightier than him, more powerful, more glorious, more holy. And he's not able to tie his sandals, not worthy to tie his sandals. Just showing how different John the Baptist, who's a great prophet, is compared to Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. And we find out that Jesus is going to give a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and by which he is going to pour into each one of us through baptism the Holy Spirit. In verse 9, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Now, you might be asking, why is Jesus needing to be baptized? He's pure and holy. You're absolutely right. He didn't need to be baptized. But Jesus is going to fulfill all the law of the Old Testament. He's going to fulfill all teachings, including the last prophet. He will go into the waters of the Jordan being baptized to fulfill this, but also to fulfill it so that he sanctifies, that means to make holy the waters that are given to us in baptism by his name, by his authority. So Jesus completes this for our sake, not for his sake, but it is a marker that Jesus is beginning his ministry, and we'll see that right here. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. The heavens being torn open, by which we cannot see, nor can we ascend on our own, they are torn open for the sake of he who is going to give us entrance into heaven. And the Holy Spirit that is going to be given to us, as we read here by John's admission, is poured out onto Jesus. It is given to him. He is God, and we get to see the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And then we also hear, a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. So we see the Trinity here at Jesus' baptism. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three in one as God. We get to see them here. Christ has humbled himself taking on our flesh. Taking on a baptism of repentance for us. And we see the Holy Spirit that is going to be given to us being shown here as the heavens are torn open. A magnificent, holy, glorious thing that begins the ministry of Jesus. So what is he going to do? Well, the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, away from people. I want to remind you that in Mark, we're going to hear this word immediately, often. It's action, it's energy, it's continual process of telling what Jesus is doing. And the Spirit drives him out into the wilderness. Well, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. We don't get a lot of details here in Mark about Jesus being tempted by Satan, but we know from the other Gospels that he resists that temptation for our sake. Jesus, who is going to die for us, resists temptation. He is not able to be tempted by Jesus and gives us the ability to resist that temptation by his own very blood. Now, after John was arrested, John becomes arrested for his words and his actions. Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now this sounds like Jesus is saying, okay, now's the time we're going to do this, uh, this action of teaching you who I am. But it's even more than that. It's more important than that because the Israelites have been waiting for the Messiah. That is the Hebrew word for the anointed one, the chosen one that's going to save them from their sins. In Greek, that's Christ. He, it is now time. The, 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 the plant has now borne its fruit. It's time to pluck the fruit off the plant. It is now time for Jesus to do his ministry, to die for us. Now, I keep mentioning his death. That is a going to be something very important throughout all the Gospels. But remember and keep in your head that people don't actually know at this point in time that he's going to suffer and die for their sake. 
passing along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. I'm not sure what type of presence Jesus had, but he says to follow him. This is the same thing that's true for us. He tells us to follow him. We are called by his word, his gospel, and come to faith by his leading us. And we see even Simon and Andrew here. Simon will later be called Peter. Simon and Andrew come to him because God says to do so. He gives them faith. It's not an acceptance or a reasoning, but rather an act of faith. And remember in Mark, we're always seeing that energetic movement and action of faithfulness as people do what God has in store for them. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in the boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. So we see here that Jesus is baptized. He's tempted by the devil. He begins his ministry saying, now is the time. And he calls disciples, followers, who are going to listen to his word and act according to them, according to his teaching. What we can see here right at the beginning of Mark is that there is a call for us to hear his word, to not fall into temptation, and to follow him. We'll pick up next time here with Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 21.